Hey there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson, we discussed unconstrained optimization. This is where we were looking for the local maxes and local mins of a function over its entire domain with no additional constraints. In this video, we're now venturing into the world of constrained optimization. We're no longer gonna be looking over the entire domain of the function. We're gonna restrict our attention to just a small patch of the domain, which we call a closed and bounded set. Uh, and we're also no longer going to be looking for local extrema. We're going to be looking for global extrema. These are the points in this specified patch of domain where the function reaches its overall largest value and its overall smallest value. Now, hopefully this reminds you of stuff that you did back in Calculus 1. In Calculus 1, you were likely given a curve like this, something nice and smooth, over a closed interval AB, and you were asked, where on this interval does the function reach its absolute largest value and where does it reach its absolute smallest value? Now at first glance this might sound like a scary problem but it turns out that if your function is nice and continuous just like the function you see here then there are a couple results that are going to come to your rescue. The first of these results is called the extreme value theorem or sometimes just the EVT. It says that if you're dealing with a nice continuous function defined on a closed interval AB, then that function is guaranteed to have a global max and a global min somewhere in this interval. So the EVT guarantees that these points exist, but it doesn't tell you how to find them. That's the job of our second result, which we sometimes refer to as the closed interval method. This result says that the global max and min of your function on the interval AB can't just occur anywhere in that interval. There are a few specific locations where you can find them. You can either find them at critical points inside the interval or possibly at the end points of the interval. So in our case, the candidates for global max and min are the two end points, x equals a or x equals b, or perhaps these two critical points. We have a critical point here and a critical point here. In fact, in this case, you can see that the global minimum is going to occur at this critical point and the global maximum is going to occur at this end point. Well, this is fantastic because it gives us a way to find the global extrema. We would start by looking for the critical points of our function inside this interval, and then we could compare the values of our function at these critical points to the values of our function at the end points. Whatever point gives us the largest value, that's going to be the global max. Whatever point gives us the smallest value, that's going to be the global min. Notice that this process doesn't involve the second derivative test at all. Since we're looking for the overall largest and smallest values, we don't care about classifying points as local max, local min, or saddle points. We're just going to plug the candidates into the function and take the points that give us the biggest and smallest values. So there you go, folks. This was the situation back in Calculus 1. Let's see how we can extend these ideas to find global extremes in Calculus 3. We've now moved into the world of multivariable calculus. The graph of our function is not just a curved line in R2, but rather a curved surface in R3. Still, we're going to try to locate the global maximum and global minimum of our function over a specified patch of the domain. Before, that section of domain was a closed interval AB but now it's going to be some two-dimensional region in the xy plane. We're going to be considering regions that are closed and bounded. Well, what does this mean? The word bounded here just means that the region is contained in a finite portion of the plane. It doesn't go on and on forever in some direction. The word closed here just means that the region contains the points along the boundary, right? We're including the boundary in our region when we're looking for the global max and min. This change aside, the process of finding global maxes and mins in Calc 3 is very similar to the process we've just outlined from Calc 1. In particular, if your function happens to be continuous over this entire closed and bounded region D, then we have a version of our extreme value theorem. It says that the function is guaranteed to have a global max and a global min somewhere in this region. We also have a version of the closed interval method that tells us where to look for these global maxes and mins. It says that the global extrema will occur either at critical points or along the boundary, just like we had back in Calc 1. You can see in this picture, my global maximum is going to be at this point here, which is a critical point in my region, and the global minimum is going to occur at this point here, a point along the boundary. 
Oh, well, this is great news. It means that maybe we can do the same sort of process as we had before. We can find the critical points of our function inside this region. We learned how to do that in our last lessons, right? And then compare the values of our function at these critical points to the values of our function at points along the boundary. Wherever we find the biggest value, that's going to be our global max. Wherever we find the smallest value, that's going to be our global min. Ah, but hold on a second. Do you notice something a little fishy about what I just said? How can we compare the value of our function at every point along this boundary? Before, our boundary just had two points, the endpoints A and B. But now our boundary has infinitely many points. Oh no, what do we do? Are we stuck? No, we're going to be fine. Get a hold of yourself. We just have to treat the boundary with a little bit more care than we did before. In particular, we're going to have to first locate the biggest and smallest values of our function on the boundary itself. Then we're going to compare those to the values of our function at the critical points. You're going to see how all of this works in our examples. So let me end this video by outlining the general process for finding global extrema in Calc 3, and then we'll jump into some example problems. Here I've written down the process for finding global extrema that I described to you on the last slide. In particular, if you're looking for the global max or min of a continuous function over a closed and bounded set D, well, we know that the global max and min could occur at critical points. So let's start by looking for critical points of our function that lie in this region D. If we happen to encounter critical points outside that region, we can ignore them. Secondly, it could be the case that we have a global max or min somewhere along the boundary. You'll see in the example videos that to find these points, we restrict the equation of our function to just this boundary component and look for the biggest and smallest values there. Finally, the last step is exactly the same as it was in Calc 1. We're going to take all the points that we found in step 1 and step 2 and plug them into the function f. The largest value we get is going to be our global max, the smallest value is going to be our global min.